Now, I'm going to switch to what happened then, if I have time. And let's see. Well, well, I went to Bainbridge to boot camp into radio school because uh, I knew the Morse code very well. They wanted me to go for Morse code, and exactly where I wanted to go. When I was in eighth grade, I went down to the yeoman's office at the federal building with the Navy had a recruiting office and got all the information on radio operator. So I went through that course and I ended up uh, over on Guam. And uh, uh, at Guam, Guam had become the forward Pearl Harbor as the Pacific fleets had begun in moving back the uh, western sea frontier from Hawaii where the command of all the Pacific forces was under Admiral Nimitz having taken Wake Island, Midway Island, Kwajalein, and we talk Tarawa, next stop Guam, Mariana, Sapan, Tinian, Rota. They put uh, the forward uh, control of all the Pacific Fleet in Guam, and that's uh, where I ended up in that radio station, where we had station uh, connections to everywhere in the world just about. All Morse code or radio teletype. Uh, Do you want to um, hold up the... Uh... Yes. Oh, yes, yes. These are the type of telegraph keys we were using there. Which I uh, mounted myself because I was a radio amateur and used these for that uh, when I was back in high school. Uh, one of the things I did while there was after things uh, simmered down, all these floating mines around the world were floating and ships were hitting in them. So the chief warrant officer set up a special circuit for me today to send out messages in plain English where all these, so that all the merchant ships at sea could record uh, and copy the code where the, these uh, where mines were last seen. I did the, he would, the chief warrant would have me the message. I would send the preamble, the BT, and then the text in plain English, then the BT, which all means between text, okay? And then go to the next one. He has been the next for eight solid hours without any rest. I'll continue to send this at 15 words a minute without making a single mistake, which uh, the chief warrant officer didn't think was a particularly phenomenal thing to do and said, no, you didn't do a good job. That never happens. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, I thought it was great fun. I did something. I knew I did it well. And uh, then finally we go home. And by now we have a radio amateur station settled up, set up, which was legal. Uh, and I was able to send a, my radio amateur a message to home to my mother and father that was received in Alaska, relayed by another radio amateur to one in Canada, and for him to one in Memphis who sent a postcard in the mail, and I have still have that postcard today. And now I'm out of the Navy. All right, well, if you don't mind, we have a couple of questions for you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was uh, your saddest experience in the war? Status? Yeah. I was a radio in third class, uh, which meant I performed all the duties of a third class radio operator which was mostly Morse code. Oh, it says, what was your saddest experience? Yeah. Your saddest, like, saddest, like emotional. Oh, oh yeah, your feelings? Yeah. yeah, what's your most, like, what's your saddest experience in the war? Oh, saddest experience? Yes. Oh, I thought you said status. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was when I left Guam. You know, Guam uh, had only 18,500 some odd Japanese which all were killed uh, about uh, July the 16th, uh, 1944, leaving only about 800 still in the jungle. Uh, but uh, the, the Marines, they had over 1,000, 1,400 dead, as it turned out. And on the way out, they were, their uh, graves were easily seen at the Ghana on the way to the harbor, on this beautiful green mountain slope up to the uh, governor's mansion, all the little white crossers of the 3rd Marine Division. Saddest of all. 
Um, what was your happiest experience in the war? After we left on the Wakefield, which we boarded offshore, um, we uh, were heading for Panama Canal to get up to New York City. 21 day trip, uh, one meal a day, uh, no, no water for bathing unless you want to take a salt water bath. Uh, that is not uh, um, recommended. <laughs> it is very sticky. Uh, we passed underneath Hawaii about north of uh, some of those islands, Marquesas Islands. It was night. I was on the foredeck of the Wakefield, sitting on a long spar up on a crutch used for heavy cargo lifting. The sea was calm. So the breeze I was feeling was on just our progression at 15 knots eastward toward the canal. It was a starry night. Nobody else out there, no noise. A very feeling of euphoria swept over me as if I had no care in the world. Everything was signed. I wasn't thinking about tomorrow or even tonight. Or Whenever or what happened, uh, just calmness and the calmness of that big ocean. No roll, no pitch, just a gentle breeze, nothing else. Perfect happiness. Um, did you ever have um, a same uh, ship that you were communicating with? Um, yes, yes, as a matter of fact. It was during a typhoon on Guam. Uh, we uh, had this typhoon come in. It, it was really something. Uh, we uh, got a radio call from Clark uh, Field in Manila, the Philippines, that we, NPN Guam, were being called on something like frequency 8381 or something. I forget the exact frequency. I tuned the receiver in too, and I heard this signal, NPN. It was going like this, da 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 I'll say that again, da 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 Please get DF fix, plain English. I cannot respond in plain English. I send back to him. I send back uh, AOBH, V, instead of the DE, letter V, da 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 da. NPN, QSV, QSV, K, which means send me a series of Vs. And the K means do it now. And I crank a wheel to my side and get the DF station on the job. One here in Guam, one in Manila, one in Alaska. But alas, we couldn't get the one in Alaska up because of population problems. So we had to say to him, cannot get DF. To which he said, we are abandoning the ship. Good night, old man. Thank you much. Bye-bye. And that uh, was a sad time. We don't know their attitude and attitude. We don't know if that message was ever recorded. Well, thank you. I yeah, think that was, we have all that was great. Need. That's uh, uh, that's all we need. Uh, oh, oh, I just hit the camera. Good.